All right. So if there's no other questions on budget revisions, we'll move on to the 21-22 capital related budgets. Okay, thank you. And I know Pam will bring up the next um, exhibit for that. Uh, so each year, as you know, the, we must establish budget for all funds. And the capital related budget is just one portion of our budget, which typically we had approved um, in early budget cycle to allow times on bidding projects. This year, we're not going to have any major bidding projects, um, but the capital related budget includes operating capital, long-term facility maintenance for health and safety and deferred maintenance and capital projects, or as so many people know it, the security and tech levy. So Pam's gonna review the purpose of the budget um, and the proposed, excuse me, budget for each category. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the final amount will be included in the June 28th uh, when you adopt the entire budget, uh, which is a little different than we've done in the past. But as I said, we don't have any major projects that need to go out early for bid. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Pam. You have a lot of information in this document. She'll hit uh, the majority of the highlights and then trust that it had an opportunity to, to review all of the documents so thank you all right i'm just going to start with this capital related budget summary here um and as dd mentioned i'm just going to highlight i'm not going to go through everything on every page um so you won't be here all night i promise um so this is a summary we have the general fund fund and the construction fund um and we're we're showing what our fund balance, our audited fund balance was last June 30th, 2020, our current year budget for FY21 for revenue and expenses. What we expect or anticipate our fund balance will be for June 30th coming up here in 21, and then our budget for the next year and our final ending balance there. On, no, please note on the revenue, operating capital is the um, first up there, and that's based on our people units and our age of our buildings. It's a state aid and levy program, and we anticipate about 2.3 million in revenue next year. LTFM, that is mostly a levy program, but it also has a state aid component, and our revenue for next year is 6.4 million. Capital projects um, or the safety and security technology levy. That's a hundred percent levy and based on net tax capacity and is 4.8 million. We break that capital projects out between our general fund and our construction fund. Um, and I'm gonna jump over to the next page. And we're gonna look at operating capital. So we, we break out our operating capital and, and, and pretty much our percentages are pretty similar each year. How we break this out, teaching and learning technology, building renovation or grounds equipment, siting grounds equipment, and then transportation. And then our buildings and the DEC get a, a small amount for, for um, equipment needs or it might be the copy machine lease or those type of things. So a total of 2.3 is what we have in our budget. Um, going on to the next page is our long-term facility maintenance. This is a health and safety, has a health and safety component and a deferred maintenance component. Um, $708,000 for next year. Um, I'll just highlight the indoor air quality down at the bottom here. There's 300,000 dollars for recommissioning which is just another way of saying a tune-up on our hvac systems to make sure that they're running effectively efficiently properly and it saves us utility dollars on electricity and natural gas on deferred maintenance this is the next two pages i believe yes it is um, that is 4.8 million dollars overall which uh, 1.8 million of it is for mechanical systems. That's the biggest chunk. And that includes replacing a couple of 24 year old chillers at Chaska High School. A note on LTFM, in July, we're required by MDE to uh, submit 
an updated 10-year revenue and expenditure plan or a 10-year plan of all the projects that we're doing. So Jim Munzenmeyer and his team are working on that, and then I'll put that together for our levy documents, and that will bring to the board in June to be approved. It's required by MDE to be approved by July, but we hope we'll bring it in June and get that taken care of. And then we also include the 10-year plan typically in our budget, our budget document, our award-winning budget document. So um, we'll have that in the future for you. And let's see. There's our total of 4.8 million. Then moving on to our capital project or security and technology levy. Again, I mentioned that we break that into the general fund and the technology fund. We're in year two of 10. If you remember, this was approved for 10 more years in the fall of 2019. And the Department of Education approves a 10 year plan, our technology plan. So two million six um, eight seventy six is what we have in the in the general fund and that's for um, technology teaching and learning you can see it's classroom instructional tools support of personalized learning and student and staff devices and then on the construction and we have 2.8 million dollars and that's for infrastructure improvements and support in security and then this next page in, in your document is just showing year two of five here, um, but there's another six through 10 in the, in the big technology plan, but it's too hard to read if we have too many years here. But it, it pretty much stays fairly similar. You can see where, where the focus changes just a little bit from year to year in the, in the technology plan. And then finally, we have a page for a summary of, of how we're spending all of these different capital-related budgets by building. If you'll note, um, district-wide um, is, is almost 50% of, of the total. And that's because a lot of items, um, specifically in uh, health and safety and deferred maintenance and then in the capital projects construction we don't necessarily know at this point in time where those plumbing repairs are going to be or those electrical repairs are going to be so we we expense it out at the at the at the site but our budget is held except for those big items that we know of and we put that to a building so with that um, that's what we have planned. And again, this would come back again in June for approval with the full budget and we would bring any other changes that have come up between now and then. All right, thank you, Pam. Board members, do you have any questions? Hey, Pam, can you please just remind me how do we determine which technology items go into the operating capital versus go into capital projects? Ooh, that's a really good question, Tim. We use the items in the capital projects for what was approved by MDE. So when they put their 10 year plan and they said, we're gonna buy instructional tools and, and support this, that, and the other thing, that's what's in there. In the operating capital, we have, for a number of years, we're using um, some of those agreements for, um, for software. So software, not exactly support, but licensing. So our financial software, finance and HR software is Skyward. That's paid with operating capital. Um, infinite Campus, those, those type of operational type of things versus the support for personalized learning and, and things that are specific to this 10-year plan. Does that answer your question? Yep, that's great, thank you. So if I could just say a little bit more about that too, when, um, when Pam and I first started, you know, back in 2010 and 11, 
um, the district didn't have the technology and, and um, safety levy. And so a fair amount of our budget in operating capital was used in that fashion and for technology related things. As you know, we didn't have the devices we, did, we have today. We didn't have all of the infrastructure that we have today. So I, I actually was going to end with this, so it was a great segue, Tim, um, that we cannot lose sight of the fact that our voters were very generous for getting this tech levy passed, not only the first time, but the second time. Because if we hadn't had that now, with this pandemic and what we went into for distance learning and hybrid learning, we would have been in a world of hurt. So I can't say enough about how grateful I am that our community has supported that. And I, I'm also grateful for the people like Craig Larson and all of the team um, that supports him and, and Aaron's department for putting together such a good plan so that all of us have had the devices and the infrastructure we needed to have and use and that we could just quickly go to a board meeting in Zoom versus doing it in, in person. So it's, that we continue to have this money and I'm, I'm really grateful for the community support in this area yeah I mean that's I mean clearly you know where you know every dollar matters but I think it was, it was just uh, it's important to understand a lot you know obviously especially in the you know this this year we appreciate how much technology you know uh, goes into delivering you know the educational experience and um, how important it is so you know, obviously, it's supportive to the the, the work of the teachers um, and then everyone, but it, it is critical, and, and we do have that that levy. Um, you know, obviously, is irreplaceable, um, but there's other there's other dollars that go into that those needs as well. So, thanks for the clarification. Yeah, you know, I appreciate Tim picking up on a couple of these points. I've got kind of a question. I know that this is a long-term budget, right? And it doesn't tell us a lot about actual expenses. I'm curious um, whether or not DDU and Pam think that any, any of what's in this budget has been accelerated or funded by some of the things that we've gotten out of pandemic relief and support i i just i know that that is it's a this is just kind of a huge and a very general budget but do you do you think that there are some things that were captured in this budget initially that we've been able to sort of accelerate purchase on um you know or minimize future expense based on some of that fund those funds that were available in very narrow buckets that we were able to that pam was able to maximize spending on that we might be able to kind of reconsider as we move this forward. Yeah, I'm going to turn this over to the, the queen of the, the bucket of money here to Pam because I think she worked very hard with, with Craig. Uh, there are certain things that through the CARES funds we were able to use those dollars that freed up some of this for future, but I, I'm going to have Pam talk a little further about it, but you're absolutely right, Angela. Okay. We, we were able to for sure spend about $220,000 in technology related expenses that normally with CARES funds that normally would have been come from the technology levy here. So we have that to for, to carry forward and it's actually, it's, it's in the, it will be in the fund balance. So we can use that for other purposes going forward. So. That's just an example. We've, we've had to do more, purchase more laptops and things like that with, with teachers working from home and, and certainly more, more um, internet access and you know the pucks and all those different kinds of things that, that this supported, but whenever we could, we used the CARES funding. So I know for sure there's $220,000 out there, another another thing that the CARES funding helped support was, and um, I think it was some of the the, the badges for for um, transportation, bringing transportation and house next year, and some things for for that security cameras on on the on the buses. And Dee, you might 
remember this more more than I do, but we were able to use some CARES funding that can hopefully lessen the load next year. Perfect. Our, some of our two-way radio pieces, I believe, were part of it that could be used as well, so as safety security type thing. We were able to use CARES funds for other things and then allowed items that we were planning to use out of the general fund to be paid out of our tech levy. So it, that part's been um, great to great opportunities as well. So in the end, it'll save money on the general fund in future years. So good question. Again, now you know why I, I love having Pam on my team because she thinks through these things. She's got a good working relationship with Craig and, and John Thomas and all, uh, all that participate in that. And, and she, she does, she lays awake at night thinking about how we're gonna spend all this money in the right way, in the right buckets and what code to use and following you for. So appreciate everything, Pam, thank you. Okay, board members, any other questions? All right, thank you, Dee Dee and Pam. Um, 